welcome everybody to St. Guthlax Church here in Fishtoft, part of our coastal cluster. We're very pleased that you can join us for this online Eucharist for the 12th Sunday after Trinity. The words you need for the service will all be on screen and you can join us for spiritual communion later in the service if you wish to. We begin with a hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We come to our prayers of penitence, and so we reflect on those things that we wish to confess to God today, and receive his forgiveness for. God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we rejoice that God forgives our sins through Christ, as we say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect, our special prayer for today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Christopher is going to read our first reading for us from the Bible. Thank you, Christopher. Today's New Testament reading is from Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. From our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Christopher. And now a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread, bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now Helen's going to preach for us. Thank you, Helen. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The full armour of God. Why on earth should we as Christians need the full armour of God? 
we've got Christ on our side, surely that should be enough. But we all know being a Christian is not easy. It does not make you privileged and therefore have a carefree life. We are following the way of Christ and this can be very challenging. Paul has included in this letter to the Ephesians the criteria, the key features of how to be a Christian. The need for Christian unity, truth and honesty, kindness and forgiveness, respect for others, love and no spitefulness or bitterness. And also the need for Christ to be at the centre of our lives, trusting in him and for his purpose to be our mission. Now these are exacting standards, which at first glance seem easy to attain. However, delve more deeply and start to actually follow these criteria, we can start to see why we need these spiritual weapons. We are attacked to every front, via social media, peer pressure and society in general to chip away at our defences, to prevent us being true Christians. That is why we need this armour. And Paul uses the dress and the equipment of Roman soldiers to describe what is needed in the armour of God. And this would have resonated with Paul's audience, and it still does now. No part of the body is left undefended. Each piece of armour is necessary to ward off a spiritual attack. Putting on this armour of God reminds me of those paper dolls I had as a child. They were in the magazines and they had a variety of clothes for each doll to wear, which were attached by folding the tabs over. I envisaged the armour of God being placed on me over the clothes, just like they were on those dolls, and willing them to stay on just as I did as a child. One false move and they'd all fall off. However, we can all wear this armour of God if we have an honest relationship with God and no amount of false moves will shake it off. Paul lists each item of armour. So let's look at each one in turn and begin to understand the significance of each piece. We start with the belt of truth. Buckling this up, we are guarded ourselves against the lies that we hear, the lies that sound like truths. We must be wary of believing all that we see and hear, especially within the realms of social media. All too often we can get caught up in gossip or misinformation, which can lead to unchristian-like behaviour. Then there is the breastplate of righteousness. In Isaiah, we read that God put on righteousness as a breastplate. This is the righteousness of God, not our own righteousness, which covers and protects us. This breastplate covers the heart, the seat of emotions, self-worth and trust. God's righteousness protects us from accusations and charges made against us. The third item is the footwear the shoes of the gospel. These shoes allow us to march wherever God leads us. As Jesus said in John's gospel, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. These shoes give us the readiness to spread the good news and the motivation to continue to proclaim the true peace that is available through God. And then we move on to the shield of faith. This shield protects us from insults and temptations. It deflects these blows and when temptation comes, faith keeps us steadfast in following Jesus. Our faith is God's gift to us and it becomes stronger the longer we walk with him. This faith grows and becomes this protective shield. Paul says in 2 Timothy, I have fought the good fight I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. The shield of faith allowed Paul to live a victorious life in Christ. Our faith can give this too. Next is the helmet of salvation. This is protecting us from doubts, 
doubts about God, Jesus and our salvation. When we are certain our sins have been forgiven, we can find peace and this can allay our doubts. And as it says in 1 John, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God knows all our sins, but we need to own them, bring them before God to ensure our salvation. Finally, we have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. The sword is the only weapon of offence that is in this list of armour. God's Word is described in Hebrews as living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. God's Word is truth, and this is why it's so powerful. And we need to immerse ourselves in the Bible, the living Word of God, to become aware of its truth and the powers that it holds. Jesus used the power of the Word when he was in the wilderness and was tempted by Satan. He used scripture to head off these temptations and to send Satan on his way. We too can use the power of scripture, but we must fully understand the meaning and the context of what we read. We need to be guided by our church leaders Bible studies and our own background reading to enable us to know the true power of the word. So how do we put on this whole armour of God? It's very simple, by having a relationship with Christ. As Paul says in Romans, put on Lord Jesus. If we give ourselves to Jesus, then this enables us to put on this armour. He then gives us the strength, guidance and abilities within this armour to defend ourselves against the temptations and the evils of the world. There is, however, one more important unseen weapon that Paul mentions also in this passage. Prayer. Prayer brings you into communion with God so that his armour can protect you. As Paul says, always keep on praying and if you're like me this is not always easy sometimes prayer seems difficult awkward and so hard to do but as a very dear friend said to me once if you're finding it difficult to pray just put yourselves in God's hands and he will do the rest he knows what is in your heart and just what is needed just spending time in God's company is prayer itself. If you are struggling, read a piece of scripture, listen to some music or spend time in God's creation. This can all help to build your relationship with God and open your hearts to allow the words of prayer to flow through whatever is the situation. And Paul wrote this letter whilst he was in prison and he may have been in chains but he was not discouraged or undefeated. He didn't want the Ephesians to pray for his chains to be broken, but him to be able to be an ambassador for Christ. We may at times pray for a change in our own circumstances. However, we should also pray that God will give us the ability to accomplish his plan for us wherever we are. We must trust in him and with the armour of God and prayer, we can try to be the living body of Christ on earth. Amen. Thank you, Helen. And now let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christine's going to lead our intercessions. Thank you, Christine. Almighty God and Father, help us to be still in your presence, that we may know ourselves to be your people and you to be our God through Jesus Christ our Lord and by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom, which is much needed in the world. Strengthen and encourage us all in declaring your love. Guard us, protect us, and keep us faithful, however difficult is the message. Thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in evangelism. Thank you for those with the gift of sharing this good news in the way they live. Give us the courage and willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which come from the overflow of our love and delight in you. Fill us with your love so that the world may believe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of power you have given to peoples and nations. May we use all our powers to your glory and for the benefit of others. We remember all who suffer from the misuse of power, all who are oppressed, the wrongly imprisoned, and all who suffer from violence. And this moment we hold before you, Lord Afghanistan, which is on the brink of a humanitarian crisis. May hearts and minds which ha have been darkened by violence discover a different light and a better way. Lord, grant us peace in our hearts and in the world. Lord, Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our community. First, for the well-being of our church community, that we may be a spiritual family, a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished we give you thanks and praise for couples planning to marry in church, for young families giving thanks for the safe arrival of their newborns and those bringing them for baptism. We pray for the social community of which we are a part, that it would be a place where all can flourish and the weak cared for, where there is harmony and celebration, and a true civic pride. We pray particularly for those who lead our community by election, by position, 
or by popular acclaim. May their leadership be that of the servant and their goals those of the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are going through times of trouble and suffering. Some perhaps in our families, some in our church, some in our wider circle of friends. We know you to be our Lord and healer of your broken world. Comfort the injured and the broken hearted. And we hold before you the people of Plymouth and Haiti in the devastation of the earthquake and the aftermath and all that that means. We ask you to touch with your generous love all those on our hearts today because of their special need. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we commit into your hands those who have run the race and kept the faith, even if that faith was known only to you and now gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever and our lives be richer because of their memory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To whom else could we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. We thank you, holy God, for making yourself known to us, both in daily living and sacramentally in the breaking of bread. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. And now we share the peace of Christ with one another. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth. Heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Behold God's love for you. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. If you wish to receive spiritual communion, please follow the words on the screen at this point. Thank you. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I humbly pray that you may enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. What has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Amen. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we have our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Thank you for joining us here today for this Eucharist on the 12th Sunday after Trinity. We hope to be able to bring you another service in a fortnight's time and hope that you can join us as well. A blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.